Hey there, and welcome to Making the Most of It, a conversational podcast aiming to educate, enlighten, and empower through intimate and timely conversations with industry-leading health professionals, entrepreneurs, moms, dads, athletes, and beyond. I'm Jennifer Morgan, pediatric occupational therapist and host of this fun new digital adventure. I'm so excited you're joining the conversation. We've got lots to discuss in this precious window of time, so let's get started. This is Making the Most of It. This week, we're sitting down with Rupa Mita, founder of Nalini Kids, a New York-based organization that teaches children emotional intelligence through physical movement. We discuss Rupa's advocacy for child wellness in New York City public schools, what it means to exercise both physically and emotionally, and her latest program, The Subject of Self. Join us in an empowering conversation about what happens when students learn the value of self-reflection. Hi, Rupa. Welcome to Making the Most of It. I'm so glad that you joined us this morning and for taking the time. And I'm so excited to hear about what you guys are doing in New York. I think that, uh, you know, just during this time right now, it's been even more incredible. So I just um, I just kind of want to jump right in. Great. I'm so honored to be here. And thank you for, for this opportunity. Oh, thank you. Oh, and it's so funny to meet people virtually for the first time, you know, like this whole, (laughs) this whole world we're living in. But, um, I just feel like even, you know, I feel like our, our practices have similar vibes. I feel like we, we are kind of in the same, you know, just our goals in terms of working with kids and, uh, you know, what you guys are doing over there. So if you could just share a little bit about yourself and, uh, why you started Nalini Kids? So I know you're the founder of Nalini Kids. Yes, I am. I, you know, I, I yes. guess the journey toward Nalini Kids started almost 20 years ago. I had a a fitness studio wow. in New York City called Nalini Method, where I taught adult mm-hmm. emotional and physical workouts. And they kept on saying, God, "I wish I had this when I was younger. I wish I knew these skills earlier on." You know, we tend to yeah. learn these things later on in life, and life kicks us down, and we're like, "Oh, we need some skills to right. deal." And so I decided to kind of volunteer at a middle school in Brooklyn, Mm -hmm. um, teaching a a fitness class combined with a book club. And it kind of grew from there. And, you know, the aim of the program is really to to make sure students kind of build lifelong habits that are practical, you know, that they're not just doing it with their teacher, that they really get bought into this this idea of wellness. Right. So it's, and I, I... I was watching some of the the videos last night and I just, I just, I got like chills because I just feel like it's such an important, uh, just the f- combining the emotional and the physical well-being for students. And I just, I think it's, it's something that's missing. Well, and I think you're right. Like, I think a lot of times we tend to separate, hey, the counselors over here, the yeah. PE teachers here, my home life is here. And I think that if there is some type of way to create a universal mm-hmm. language or a coping mechanism that kind of all departments and all kind of investors right. in the child's life can buy into, it makes a huge right. difference. But I think for the emotional workouts, especially, they, they just they're that much more effective when you have the physical right. undertone and vice versa. They complement right. really, really well. So, so going back to when you first started, uh, you said you were a fitness instructor. Did you have experience working with children or is this just kind of a natural, it was like a natural progression. Uh, what's your, what's your background besides, you know, so my Fitness. background, I really, you know, I started out with adult clientele and mm-hmm. I was teaching, I would say like six classes a day, six days a week. And then it gradually got um, younger, my clientele. A lot of the people ended up bringing in their, their children mm-hmm. and I would hold children classes. And then it just felt like a natural progression to yeah. me to kind of develop and get more trained in how to connect with young students, whether they be right. kindergarten third grade, eighth grade and beyond. And really it all comes back to kind of feeling, you know, comfortable in your right. body and in the mood to work out. Different types of people um, allowed us to try different strategies, you know, right. so, so, so many people know what to do. Like they know they need right. to work out, they know they need to eat healthy, but they're like, I'm just not in the mood to do it or it's too hard. 
but figuring out those low hanging fruits to kind of get people involved is, is, is what we've, I, I think, mastered over time. Yeah, it sounds like it. So then when you, after you volunteered uh, and, you know, just kind of realized that there was a need for this, this type of work and this type of curriculum, how did you, what was the next step that, that happened? I'm just so, I'm just so curious because I've started my own practice and it's, I just feel like the story is always just so great, you know, to share kind of how, you know, you started, you got inspired and then how it grew from there because your program's incredible. And we'll talk a little bit about that too. So. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. No, I think I started out with a book. I ended up, you know, feeling inspired by my adult clientele and making mm-hmm. a really big observation in my classroom setting. I felt like, although I was helping these clients get into shape physically, I felt the emotional weight in the classroom. So even right. though I had clients who were technically in shape, they felt out of shape emotionally, right. or vice versa, clients that were out of shape physically felt in shape emotionally. And so I decided right. to write a book that kind of synthesized this idea of emotional weight and how could we measure it without being in a therapist's office? How can we measure our emotional weight the way we measure our physical weight? And so I came up with this concept of the weight of words, you know, the idea that your view of happiness weighs differently on you than my view of happiness. And then that slowly evolved into the happiness workout, the confidence workout, the perseverance workout, and really trying to make emotions feel more tangible. And then it was a natural progression from there. I started with middle school students sharing the book with them. And then I started writing children's books. And I don't know, it just happens, right? Yeah. It's like, all of a sudden, you're like, what? There's so many projects to do. Right, right. And then you feel like there's so many things, and you're like, okay, let me stay focused. (laughs) Um, I wanted to stay in emotional and physical workouts. And because we, so much of what we do is in the school setting, Mm -hmm. I think when we were really listening to principals, it's really, they were trying to tackle the problem of focus in the classroom, you know? Yes, I know all about that. (laughs) Yeah. It's yeah. like a student usually lacks focus because physically they're uncomfortable yes. or they're stressed or emotionally, maybe they, or, or they're hungry. Emotionally, right. maybe they're stressed out or feeling anxious. So that's why we said, okay, to increase focus, let's tackle the physical factors and the emotional mm-hmm. factors, different types of workouts. Right. And I mean, kind of going from like a psychological perspective. And I mean, even with what, what I do, the occupational therapy, sensory processing, you know, just having your body, you know, you have to have those underlying needs met before you can really learn to your full capacity, you know? So I, we see so many students in the classroom who have such a hard time just even sitting still, um, Mm -hmm. like you said. And, and so just, I love also that you made your program just short, they're short little bursts of, of learning, whether it's emotional or the physical. So I think that's just, it's just so aligns with what we do as occupational therapists too. So. No, and I love like when I see your feed, like you're, you're, you give such amazing quick tips and our goal is to kind of, you know, in this very busy world, it's hard to commit to something. 20 minutes or I know. Minutes. 10 minutes is like perfect. So I, I, yeah. yeah. Parents are like, okay, I can do that. Teachers are like, I can fit that into my, you know, to the daily schedule. So I think that's brilliant, you know, and that's all kids need. They just need a quick little break. They need a quick, you know, they're not going to be able to, like, like you said, sit for long periods of time. And, you know, but I think that, um, just the idea behind it is just so fantastic. So, so you wrote the books or you wrote the book and then you started doing more children's books and it just kind of evolved naturally. How did you get into the New York school system? So that's, that was the next step. How did that happen? The school that I was volunteering at uh, was a middle school, a public school in Brooklyn. And from there, mm-hmm. I guess we, we, we were featured somewhere and I got um, a science teacher at a different school reached out and said, I'd love to have this program in our school. And I was, you know, I was volunteering and teaching. I, did, I didn't have like a training program to train other teachers. Right. Said, hey, I'd love to connect together, but you know, we're gonna have to like co-teach this thing and and figure it out. Mm-hmm. And she was an amazing science teacher. Her name is Eileen McManus. Right. And she 
she ended up doing a STEM fellowship at the centralized Department of Ed in New York City, used our program as a wow. case study. And then our program really took off when we started to make academic links. So for example, we mm-hmm. really cover the concept of emotional and physical weight. But because she was a science teacher, we started developing lesson plans around kind of the effect of stress on the body, um, physiologically. Right. And so then it just evolved into math lesson plans, history lesson plans. And so all of a sudden we had a very comprehensive curriculum. Um, and then, wow. then that evolved into us becoming a kind of a mandated social emotional learning program in New York City summer schools. So, you know, I think we've serviced maybe over a couple hundred thousand kids at this point um, throughout the five boroughs. And now, now it's kind of nationwide. That's incredible. I know. And I, I mean, I, we need this, you know, we need this here, <laughs> Like we, you know, LA Unified School District. I, I worked for a uh, Santa Monica Malibu school district for a little while and then started my own practice, but I've worked in so I've got, I go to so many schools, uh, private schools, especially. And it's just, it's, it's a really great program. So I'd love to, we can chat later, but I'd love to, you know, see if we can figure out how to introduce it to more schools, especially right now. So, Mm. so tell me a little bit about how you guys have adjusted to Mm. the coronavirus. And it seems like when I, when I did watch, it seems like you guys have really tackled like, okay, this is what's happening. You know, more kids are going, doing online schooling, more kids are remote and virtual and what a great program to be able to offer? Have you been really busy just trying to get all of that going so that you can offer your program to more kids? Because this is the perfect time for that. It is, you know, social media learning, I think, you know, it's it's really peaking right now. People really appreciate the effect it has in schools. And that physical workouts, people want to move. They have a lot going on in the brain. Yes. So I think, you know, what we ended up doing is saying like, okay, COVID happened. So, so many things are unknown right now. We wanted to come up with a program that felt very surgically as a response to COVID. So we came up with this curriculum, we call it subject of self. And I I saw it. It's, it's been fun to develop because this idea that, you know, we have so many subjects that we're trying to make up for, but the subject of self is probably the one that's most mm-hmm. needed to navigate these uncertain times. <laughs> yes. And so what it is is a, a 10 minute daily curriculum filled with, you know, physical and emotional workouts um, and drawing exercises that either parents can do at home, teachers can do with one student or multiple students. And so uh, it's a year long free curriculum. You know, we, we wanted to knock yeah. on any barriers to entry. Um, and so that, that's what we developed this. That's great. That's just fantastic. So, so do you, are you still creating right now? What are you, are you available for teachers as needed? Like how big is your team? I'm just so curious about how you've kind of what you guys look like right now with considering all of the uh, changes happening. (laughs) Um, Well, we're lucky that, you know, with COVID and stuff, we felt like the need was even more now, like you were saying, for us to kind of, you know, take the shot here, even if we give stuff away free and and, and kind of see what happens. I wanted to kind of keep the team strong. And in fact, we're kind of growing the team and thinking about that kind of the homeschool layer, because that seems to be... Mm -hmm a huge um, need right now. Parents at home, yes. they're not satisfied with what their schools are delivering. They feel like they need a restart in the morning, just like, hey, can we get connected as a family? Yeah. And then we can learn our subjects or other subjects in school from there. Yeah. Um, and so, our, you know, we have a small team, it's about five people, and we're just all you know, right. super invested in this and, and committed to giving not only free curriculum, but curriculum that you can kind of grow into year after year, K, K through. Right. I saw that. I just, and I love how you, it's just, I think I was just so impressed with how well thought out and how uh, just comprehensive the program is. And, and, you know, like we, we talked about earlier, it's, you know, 10 minutes every day, you know, Mm -hmm. it, it becomes part of their, their natural, you know, part of their learning. And it's, it's just such an important piece that's missing in schools right now. And, and especially right now with, you know, COVID happening. So, uh, so do you guys, what age would you say would, 
is probably the most, uh, I guess, what age or grade level would most kids mostly benefit from this? Or have you seen that there's like, you know, like second graders, third graders, kids who are a little bit younger, or like more adolescents who mm-hmm. maybe really need the social emotional support right now? What, mm-hmm. Do you have like a, a gauge? I, I've seen it all over the place. Honestly, it's like all so many teachers are maybe meeting their students for the first time. And usually what would happen right. in the in-person setting of getting connected to one another icebreakers and et cetera, isn't happening. So I feel like right. having teachers from kindergarten through 12th grade really benefit from the program. You know, usually yeah. with this type of stuff, it's easy to kind of say, okay, elementary schoolers, you know, kind of they need it, they're fresh, they're open to it. But what I've re- I'm really yeah. proud of, our curriculum for middle school and high school is really strong and it mm-hmm. really allows for student voice. You know, a big philosophy that we have at Nalini Kids is we want to flip the age old question of who are are you going to be when you grow up that we ask children to who are you now and what can you teach us and mm-hmm. when you say who are you now what can you teach us and it's supported mm-hmm. by curriculum you know you get this rich student voice and interpretation of all the things going on in the world in the classroom mm-hmm. and you're able to move forward together I, I would say the teachers need this curriculum as much as the students yeah that's inc- I mean that's just amazing so uh I mean I love the curriculum, the educational piece of it, but I also love the sort of spiritual meditation background. It seems like with this, the whole concept and the whole idea, you know, mindfulness is so big right now and you guys incorporate it so well. I love how you use the just even the wording like power for, you know, um, I think it was jump squats, things like that. Just so, yeah. So well thought out and it does, it has like a little bit of a, um, I don't want to, a spiritual element a little bit. So is that, is that something that you've, you know, I know you're a yoga, you have a background in yoga. So is that something that you purposefully or just kind of naturally, you know, kind of had when you created Nalini Kids? I love that you said that or kind of observed that, you know, I, I think that so many times spirituality or it seems to, and like when I got trained in yoga, some things can feel so esoteric and out yeah. unless I have my green smoothie, my perfect yoga mat, right? <laughs> we're all getting along, then I can relax. So we, we really wanted to take kind of the goal of meditation and mindfulness and make it super practical and for lack of a better word, fun for a student, you know, yes. it's fun to yeah. think about the power workout and doing that next to your friend or kind of connecting about it mm-hmm. and having challenging workouts and having that focal point yeah. of having each workout be an, uh, a word, an emotion word allows for great conversation. Yeah. And, and you're really able to say, how does the word power physically manifest in my body? Like, how do I hold myself versus when I do the worry workout versus the courage workout? You know, it forces right. the connection. Right. I agree. I mean, yeah. So I just, I feel like it's, it's such a strong introduction for some of these kids who maybe never have, or might not otherwise have Mm -hmm. that kind of, you know, exposure to anything, you know, they might, they probably won't go to a yoga class. You know, it's like not all, I mean, in LA, we, we have that. I'm sure in New York, you guys have that too, where kids are taking yoga, um, kids are meditating, which is amazing. I just, I think it's just so great that you're your program introduces it in a fun way, like you said, which we're all about, you know, making, keeping things fun, even when we're working on stuff. Uh, I just think it's a great way to introduce that, those concepts and that framework to kids who might, you know, otherwise not have the exposure to that. Teachers and adults, sometimes we have our own barriers to entry. So let's say you're not a fan of yoga, but you are a fan of quiet time. You're not a fan of meditation, but you're a fan of reflection. Like we, we tried to create a program that felt more universal and that everyone could find their own voice in it. Right. So regardless of kind of what you believe or what you think or your exactly. own experiences, it's like, right. That's, and it's very um, neutral, I guess. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's right. That's, yeah, that's a perfect word. I, yes. That, yeah. That neutral and, and uh, what's the word? Um, like just very accessible, I guess, just like anyone, it, it kind of makes it like, yeah, I'm doing this, this little position, you know, it's, I'm meditating mindfulness, you know, it's like, <laughs> it just makes it not a big deal. 
Yes, I wanted it to mm-hmm. feel like kind of intuitive in that sense. Like, okay, when I yes. do do the power workout, it does feel like a jump squat. I do want to, like, you know, engage in my thighs and, and, and feel the power in my body. I love that. And then I just loved your story about the word. So when we first, you know, kind of saw you guys and, and noticed noticed you guys, uh, the word Nalini is comes from your mother and she had a really strong, obviously a very strong impact in your life and it's kind of dedicated to her. Is yes, that right? Um, she, she actually passed away this year and, uh, Oh, I'm oh, so sorry. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, it was oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Um, it's, it's, it's funny cause usually I always talk about the program and like, it's 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 interesting to talk of her in a past sense, but because the program has been built so much on what she shared, uh, I felt very lucky being her daughter because she just created yeah. an environment where I always felt challenged and encouraged and supported. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily have that gift or they can't provide that to their children in this time. And so our hope is to kind of take that thinking work out and create curriculum that really does feel nurturing that we are taking care of you as an adult. So, so you can take care of your children. Um, and, and my that. mom, you know, I think the reason I named it really after her is that even though she couldn't run a marathon and do all these physical things that uh, I always thought was like the fitness school, she was had an emotional buoyancy and vibrancy about her I always looked up to. And so that's really where the connection between physical and emotional workouts kind of started was was her importance on, on that. Right. So you were, you had more of like a physical, you know, physical kind of side and then she was more of the emotional support. Um that side. So you combined it. And I mean, how amazing that you have this program, you've named it after her and it's going to live on. And this is kind of her, you know, this program is yeah. her, you know, it's embodiment of her. So that's just incredible. Oh, um, so yeah. Yeah. So do you, um, do you have any questions for me or, or I feel like we should, we should chat after this about potentially doing something like, let's collaborate. Let's figure out how we can, you know, I don't know if this program is in LA, but like, I would love to chat with you more about seeing what we can do to, <laughs> to like bring this program to more people. Yeah. Well, it's funny because so much, it, it, it's like it, whenever I've been in a school setting or even a private, like a private school setting, I feel like the people I connect with the most are really like the occupational therapists. Who yeah. Actually I can, go I can imagine. It. Because they, they, I feel like, you know, that they have a real, you, you, your practice has a real appreciation of the physicality of yes. it and making it feel like children of all ages and backgrounds can access it. And so we're always looking to learn and collaborate. So I, I would love the yeah. opportunity to say like, hey, what could we do better for if you have, you know, a class of kindergartners or third graders, what, what, what can we accentuate to make it better? Uh, cause these tools, they're foundationally great, but they, we can always create new tools and better access points. You know, children, when we end up talking to them, they, they keep us so much and we have to upgrade our tools all the time. Totally. I mean, I feel like I'm trying to keep up with them. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, but I love that. And I think, I think you're right. I think that's why I get, I'm really inspired by you and your program because I, uh, I do, I see that, you know, as an OT and I also have a a background in psychology. Like I just feel that, you know, I tend in my practice, I tend to really incorporate the social emotional piece into my sessions with kids. And I, I like to say that I get on their level, but I really do. And I really feel like, uh, you know, we, we tend to use a lot of these ideas that you're so beautifully, putting out there and, and making accessible and, and they're, they're real. Like, so, so you can give them to kids, you know? So I think that, you know, we really do align a lot. Like you said, you know, OTs, uh, we need the sense, the sensory processing, understanding how your body's feeling, you know, just overall regulation, like, you know, just becoming more aware of yourself, where you are in space, mindfulness, yes. staying still, um, even just, you know, I was looking at some of the handouts that you have with, you know, kids need to be doing drawings and they need to be writing. Yeah. And so where does OT come into play? So I just feel like there's, there's definitely, we can chat more another time, but, um, 
I just, I love love what you're doing. Yeah. I love what you're doing. I'm so impressed and uh, amazed that you've created such a, a really a perfect program that really I can see will serve and is, has served, is serving so many students and teachers and families. I mean, because if the kids are going to be successful in the classroom and learn these types of tools in the classroom, which is amazing, they'll be able to, you know, bring them and carry them over at home and maybe teach their parents something. So it's just, I see it as very uh, holistic. It's funny. It's a, it- when I was like looking at, at at all your stuff, what I I was so excited about this interview because I feel like you have the practical, fun stuff, but then it's in the whole child realm. Right. I think that, that that's like our goal with this program too is like let's make it practical and fun. But when you take the yeah. macro picture, what we're hoping to do is really create this lifelong habit and right. make it contagious for whether it's the student or or their parent that the whole family can kind of get bought into it. Exactly, exactly. And, and that, you know, we keep our expectations, you know, realistic, but it's just, we really want to, yeah, it's, it's, we want to involve the whole team, we want to, and we really do look at the whole child. And I think that's kind of what sets Mm -hmm. us apart, because there's so many occupational therapists, there's so many practices in LA and all over. Uh, But what we're doing at most kids is we're really And I think it's because I am an, you know, empathic and I just like really get the kids. I really want to make quick progress. We look at the whole picture, you know, we get it. So it's like, it's just, it's that kind of view of everything. And I think you guys share that philosophy and that's really cool. (laughs) I feel the same way as you do, Jen, because it's, um, sometimes when you get so technical, let's say like with your, I know. (laughs) Or like I've yeah. seen people do like kindness trackers. Like I'm going to track my kindness, and it's like right maybe, too much. Maybe, maybe <laughs> yeah. you technically sent me the birthday card or gift, but I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it in my heart. Right. And it's like that. Right. That really makes a difference. You know, maybe technically it does. A student to hold a pen better or sit more properly, but do they feel that they understand the whole thing that's happening? Right. Are they are they wanting right. to take care of themselves, and do they feel taking care? Right. Of them? Exactly. Oh, so refreshing. I have chills. I'm so excited. I am. I'm just so grateful to have met you, even though it's virtually. Um, I'm so glad that you're doing the work that you're doing. It's incredible. Your story is amazing. Uh, and thank you again so much, Rupa, for taking the time today to share your story and yeah, and what you guys are doing at Nalini Kids. And what's the the website? Do you want to share the website that people oh, can yeah. check out? Um, so if you want to sign up for kind of the free daily curriculum, it's subjectofself.org, just how it's subjectofself.org. Um, and then Perfect. you can go to Nalini Kids and check out our kind of other fuller programs as well. But I'd love to connect more about California and beyond because yeah. it's so fantastic to meet like-minded people in this yes. space. And um, I don't know, I'm really invested in that. So thank you so much. Thank you, Rupa. All right, you guys, that's the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Let's always remember to stay humble, be kind, and to take the opportunities we have to help educate, enlighten, and empower ourselves and those around us. We've only got this one life. Let's live it well or try by making the most of it. Take care till next time.